Welcome back to Model Trains 365. I know it's been a while since my last video and almost nine months since I did my first layout tour. So I wanted to once again walk you through the layout and point out some of the projects and progress that I've recently made. Due to the time it takes to record and edit these videos, I'm going to break this layout tour into two parts. This first video focuses mainly on everything happening east of the Chicago Yard. So I hope you take a few minutes to sit back and enjoy watching what's new on the Heartland Division in HO scale. The first update I want to show you is underneath the layout and it's just a master power switch which is a switched outlet that turns on the DCC system which is an NCE 5 amp power pro and all the accessories that are hooked up to the layout like the lock programmer and then all the Arduinos that I'm using to control the signals they are also powered on with the flip of that switch and then I moved the all the circuit breakers to one central location and made them nice and neat so it looks pretty cool from top to bottom I've got PSX circuit breakers the new NCE DCC meter followed by some more circuit breakers uh, this one here just being a newer version and then the bottom is an auto reverser PSX as well so this is something I've been wanting to do for quite some time. I still need to work on some cable management behind the computer there, but overall I'm pretty happy with what I've got so far. Now moving on to the top side of the layout, back here on the east staging area, which is not really used for much staging at the moment since I'm not doing any ops, but it's more of a storage for a lot of overflow stuff that's just clogging up the main line and the sidings and the Chicago yard. I've just moved over here. It started off as eight tracks and I have since updated it to 10 tracks, adding the two on the left, as you can see in this picture. This will give me a little bit more storage for now and then in the future, more staging flexibility. Moving out of the staging area, we're now on the main line as it goes around the Indiana Harbor Loop. This is the easternmost loop and it allows for the continuous running of trains, which is a must have on my layout. Inside the loop will contain a large steel mill complex made up of mostly Walther's buildings. In the foreground is the lakefront energy power plant paired up with a set of coal conveyors and a transfer house. As of now, the power plant will receive coal via the riverfront and all steel shipments will be made by rail. The track plan consists of three holding tracks, one scrap metal delivery track, and two outgoing coil tracks. There is also a runaround track to facilitate car moves around the mill. This mill complex will provide switching opportunities with incoming and outgoing car loads. I've also put in the panel for tortoise control for eight of the turnouts that is a NCE switch eight and button board. And then I'll put a toggle switch panel right here in front. So when you're operating, you can stand here and do all the turnouts. Moving along, this back here will be a background building more resembling the rolling mill stuff. Something large to really fill in that scene. And then down here at this far end is another fabrication plant which they'll make steel beams and stuff like that.
Moving away from the steel mill, I'm going to take control of my Herzog ballast train and continue moving westward down the main. The consist in front of you is made up of four scale trains, rivet counter locomotives. The two lead GE-9 locomotives were weathered by John Hill. Dash 9 number 9637 was weathered by Sean Matson of Lakeshore Models. The trailing unit is one of the scale train's AC 4400s that was recently released. It remains in its factory fresh paint. The Herzog high side gondolas are from Athern and they have been fitted with Mac rail products, no cut ballast doors, and the interior slope sheets. This unit train was weathered and fitted with resistor wheel sets for block detection. As the train exits the reversing loop, it begins to cross over the Calumet River. This segment features an operational bascule bridge that is paired with various other bridge sections from both Walther's and Microengineering. Be sure to check out my other video that features the work that's previously been completed in this area. I'm hoping to finally get the water poured over the upcoming winter. The west bank of the Calumet River features Simplify sand and gravel and is also home to an additional scrap metal and trash processing industry. As the main line straightens out, we begin to run by the Union Pacific's fictitious Global X intermodal facility. The intermodal facility is close to 15 feet in length and is only made up of one loading and unloading track. In the background, there's an additional spur that services a four-door cold storage food processor. This industry also accepts corn syrup and vegetable oil by tank car. The Atlas reefer cars you see on the spur were painted and weathered by Cody at K-Rail Weathering. He did an outstanding job on the hand-drawn and painted graffiti, as well as the overall weathering of these cars. Be sure to follow his Instagram account, which is at Ohio Southern, and check out more of his work. Once past the cold storage warehouse, the main line and the adjacent passing siding cross over a removable bridge section that runs in front of the patio doors. As the train makes its way off the removable section, it crosses into the signaled section of the layout and goes underneath the St. Louis Loop for the first time. I will cover the signal system further in my next video. As the train nears downtown Chicago, a lengthy yard lead branches off the main just east of the large classification yard. Once again, the tracks pass under the St. Louis Loop and past an industrial sand plant. Next to the sand plant is the UP Maintenance of Way headquarters. If you are interested in how I created this scene, check out my video update from February 20th of 2023. Around the curve is the UP Locomotive Servicing Facility and the start of the classification yard ladder. I salvaged the main building from a diorama I built about five years ago and I recently began work on the servicing platforms, booms, and cabinets.
I am swapping out the fuel cranes from the Walther's kit with ones from American Limited, and I'm also going to add overhead double arm LED light fixtures from Atlas along the platforms. On the power track sits another trio of Scale Trains Dash 9 locomotives. These units were also weathered by Sean Matson of Lakeshore Models. I'm going to bring these beauties into the open servicing track. I have stopped the ballast train on the main alongside the yard and I'll keep it here until the next video. This is my Chicago classification yard, which is a section measuring roughly 25 feet in length that consists of two 16 foot long arrival and departure tracks and seven classification tracks. There is also an additional runaround track that facilitates power moves and allows access to the locomotive servicing area and the Cargill corn syrup plant, which are both located at each end of the yard. As always, thanks for watching this episode of the Heartland Division and HO Scale, and be sure to stay tuned for part two of this full layout tour coming soon.